Today, I'll be showing you the must-have top 10 Mac apps in 2024 for productivity, workflow, system maintenance, backup, and privacy so that you make the best out of your Mac system. Let's get going. For all the apps I'll be talking about, all the links will be in the description if you want to go and download them and install them and try them for yourself. 10 years ago, I made the switch from PC over to Mac and along the way, I found a few key apps that I ended up using almost every single day and this is the list that I'm about to show you. What's the one thing we do more than anything on our computer? It's usually browsing the internet. That's why my number one app for power user is called Brave. It's a freeware based on the same source code as Chrome. Since the massive scandal that came out in 2018 regarding Facebook and Cambridge Analytica, users are now much more wary of their digital footprint and how their data is being used. Brave is a really fast and efficient alternative to Safari and it comes in by default with these ad blockers that also prevents website tracking. So it's really optimal for user privacy. So I'm gonna show you the few tweaks you need to do once you install the app. First thing you're gonna need to do is go to your main window here and go to customize. So you're gonna get rid of a few features that are not necessary. So first turn off background images, turn off sponsored images, you can turn off Brave Stats, Brave News as well. And in Cards, you're gonna turn off here Brave Talk and Brave Rewards. The second mandatory app that I would recommend is not an app per se, it's a service that requires an app. It's a VPN, Virtual Private Network. When you're using a VPN, the data that you're sending and receiving is encrypted and it makes it much harder for internet service providers or hacker to monitor what you're doing over the internet. And this helps a lot with your safety as well as your anonymity. The other amazing thing is that you can bypass geo-restricted content and access region-specific content. I'll show you how that works. So here's the icon of the app. I'm using private internet access, but there are several other providers for VPN services out there like NordVPN. So this always boots up at the same time as my OS and I'm leaving it running in the background at all times. The first thing you can see here is that my IP is redirected. Right now I'm connected via Houston in US, that means I can access, for example, Pandora Radio, where I can't in Canada. But if there are some things that you want to access, for example, let's say Brazil, you simply type Brazil here, and then you can change your VPN to Brazil. And now I'm going to be able to access content that's only available to Brazilian, something I would never be able to do without a VPN. VPNs are usually services that you have to pay monthly. In this case, I'm paying private internet access just over $2 per month. If you want to use a referral link in the description, this will give you one month for free. Still talking about privacy and security, our third app is Little Snitch. It's about $50 and it's the next level firewall because even though Windows and Mac OS come with built-in firewalls, they're not really bulletproof. I'm gonna show you how Little Snitch operates. So here you can see the network monitor icon and when you open it, you're gonna see a list of applications that are basically running in the background. And you can see here these in green were actually approved, but these in blue are pending. So for example, Parallels Desktop, which we're gonna cover later on, hasn't been approved. So I can decide to turn it off. So this really helps you take control over what's being transmitted between your computer and any other server out there. And for example, if you have malware installed on your computer without you knowing, you're gonna be able to detect the signal that's trying to ping the server from the malware to the server. So this can help prevent potential problems like that. The fourth app for power users is called VLC. It's a video and audio playback application that's basically an alternative to the built-in Apple Music. And why is VLC so cool? First, it's a freeware, open source. It works on both Mac and PC. And the awesome feature with that is it can basically play back any video or audio file type. So it can be FLAC, it can be 24 bits, 16 bits. It can be a very high sample rate, 192 kilohertz. Doesn't matter. VLC will basically play any file type without any issue. What's the difference between this and Apple Music? Well, Apple Music, to be able to play high-resolution audio files, you're going to have to convert your files to ALAC or M4V. 
And once you do that, you basically convert your file to be able to work on a specific system. And it's always good to keep freedom over which type of system you want to use, either PC or Mac. So you should keep your files in original file format, like let's say FLAC at the source. So that way you never know if you go to a friend's house with your external hard drive, then you can play back your music. Or you can also play it on a PlayStation device or any other device like that. It's basically the same for hard drives. It's always better to have a hard drive that can be connected to both a Mac or a PC. So if you're trying to have a PC read an APFS format hard drive, it's not going to work unless you install a third party software, for example, by Paragon Software to be able to read your drive. Otherwise, it just won't work. So it's always good to keep freedom and basically autonomy on what kind of system can read your material or your devices. The fifth app for power users is called Caffeinated. It's the little coffee cup that you see right here. So you can activate and deactivate. And what does that do? It basically keeps your screen activated. It keeps your system awake without interruption. And this is vital when you're running virus scans, when you're doing long backups, when you're transferring data, let's say downloading large files. So that way you make sure that the file transfer is going to be completed before the computer goes to sleep. Number six is called Permissions Reset. That app really lets you take control over permission file. So if you're a long time Mac user, you probably stumble upon a problem once or twice that you tried to open the file and it says permission denied. Even if you were the administrator, you still couldn't open the file. So what do you do? You basically open here Permissions Reset and you drag and drop the file in it and reset permissions. And then after that, you're going to be able to open any kind of file. The permissions will be basically set back to normal. So read and write. The seventh app for power users is called Parallels Desktop. And this allows you to run Windows on your Mac without having to do another partition on your hard drive with Bootcamp or any other thing. So you simply open Parallels Desktop and you can run Windows just like that. So right now it's suspended, so it doesn't take too much CPU power but as you can see you don't need to do any extra step you install it this is about $99 yearly it's now a subscription model unfortunately but it's still a really really good app and it allows you to run games or apps that are exclusive to PC the eighth app for power users for general system maintenance is called clean my Mac and I've been using this for many many years so as you can see here you can do smart scan to clean up a few gigabytes clean caches you have also malware removal to get rid of spywares and stuff like that and also really cool optimization and maintenance tools that you can get rid of login items and clean a bunch of things like for example free up ram free up purgeable space re-index spotlight repair disk permissions and also an uninstaller to make sure that you get rid of all the data when you're done using one application the ninth app for power users is called carbon copy cloner it's a backup application and of course you have time machine that comes built in with mac os and this can do timely backups and you can recover and all that but what's so special with carbon copy cloner is that it can do a bootable clone of your hard drive so if you're about to upgrade to a new operating system and you're not sure if there may be issues with compatibility and things like that you can clone it beforehand and then you can roll back entirely without any hassle so here's the interface very user friendly and simple you have source destination and here automation to schedule your backups so let's say you want to do it once a week once a month you can do it during the night so it doesn't interfere with your work so in case of system failure this is one irreplaceable option you can basically just take your drive and keep on working on another system our tent app for power users is called black hole it's a freeware and it's not an app per se it's a virtual audio loopback driver that allows you to pass audio through applications with zero latency and what's the best use for it it's to do screen recordings and being able to record internal audio which you can do on a Mac normally and in this video I explain exactly how to set it up so if you're a podcaster a gamer a producer or an instructor this becomes vital to be able to do screen recordings with internal audio I hope that you found the content helpful if you did please click like subscribe and hit that notification bell see you again very soon